Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Bible Toolbox. I'm Luke. And I'm Lydia, and we're here to help you enjoy the Bible through the tools that scholars and programmers have created for you. And we thought as the year is ending, we would just kind of do a little year in review. Where have we been? Where are we going? Just recommendations that we would like to make again to you. Um, just, yeah, thanking you all for the support you've shown us this year. And it's been really fun. We've gone, I feel like, a lot farther than we expected. So yeah. it's been really fun. Yeah, so we hope to, by the end, you'll uh, you'll get kind of our highlights, the what what resources should be on your Christmas list for this mm -hmm. year. So, all right, let's let's summarize where where have we been and where are we going? Oh, where have we been? Um, well, we started with translations, which I still feel like are kind of my top favorite recommendations. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, "What should I listen to?" I say, "The translations episodes were so cool." So just explaining what the different translations were, why they differ, and then um, talking with Dr. Riken and Dr. Strauss, mm -hmm. the NET translation with um, Dr. Keith Lee, like those are all so enlightening, I feel like. Yeah. And then we moved, moved from translations to study Bibles, mm -hmm. which are kind of the one, one tool that kind of gathers all biblical studies in one little handy place, one <laughs> handy book. Yeah. And there are different ones, there are like different cultural ones. backgrounds. If you want more of a background of the culture of the Bible, there was the NIV biblical, biblical theology. theology. Yeah. Okay. That was more of a tracing themes yeah. throughout the Bible. And gave recommendations of a few others. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some more generic ones. And then from, we go from there, from there, we all oh, we went to, we went into teaching. Yes. Just a quick different, you know, there's you can study the Bible for topics and you can study the Bible for the text. The, what oh, what's right. the flow of the text? Are you teaching exactly what the author meant or are you pulling different verses yeah. about one topic? Yes. Yeah. And then we kind of did a few off episodes with a uh, uh uh Dr. Seth E. Horn with the Apocrypha. Yeah, the Apocrypha. And then Dr. Abernethy's uh, just overview of how to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that little book. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So where where are we headed? Yeah. So where we're where we're heading is we've we've laid out in this teaching of you know textual studies and topical studies, and so we are going to talk about the resources to study those eventually. This is kind of the idea. So uh, in the lineup, we have. We're going to do several interviews and episodes on commentaries, which are usually kind of verse by verse explanations of the text, and more technical than study Bibles. Though. Yes, yeah, a lot more. Yeah, I think study Bible contains the biblical text and notes. This is like one book of the Bible is as big of a study Bible, <laughs> and all the information that are there. Uh, and then we plan to do some interviews on children's resources, mm -hmm. how to get your children excited about the Bible and what tools are available for them. Yeah. Um, and then like t tutorials on actual websites that right. use the Bible, like Blue Letter Bible, Step Bible, I have a really cool interview for those coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And those will be helping. We'll have episodes on uh, how to study the text versus how to do a word study, mm -hmm. what websites are best for word studies, and how to kind of pull in multiple websites to kind of get a well-rounded study of a biblical word and, mm -hmm. yeah, pitfalls and <laughs> and things to avoid when yeah. doing word studies. Because it, it seems like those are the most readily available resource is like those online yeah. just websites that have the Bible and some different Greek words, some different mm -hmm. highlighting options. And and there's so many good resources online, Yeah, but it's learning how to use them and how to find the good ones mm -hmm. uh, can can be hard. So that's kind of part of what, what we want to do. Another thing that we hope to do is update our website a bit. Mm -hmm. So we plan for our website to kind of be like a introduction to interpreting the Bible. Right now, there's just a link for past episodes, but we hope it'll be structured in a way, kind of like a book, book sections and, and so on, where you can go and find articles or interviews, episodes that we've done, uh, so that makes it more searchable and easier to 
to dive in how how to interpret the Bible. All right. Okay. So our our main what should be on your Christmas list for for 2022, I guess, mm -hmm. going into 2023. Mm -hmm. So we really want to recommend uh, Andy Abernethy's Savoring Scripture, mm -hmm. The Six Steps. I feel like that's just kind of a, an introduction in, in book form of basically what we're doing, trying to do in this podcast. It gives an awesome introduction yeah, and as, to the Bible. As someone who doesn't study the Bible academically, I read the book and I was real, it was very helpful for me. Mm -hmm. Just like step by step and you can do the steps in different order but it was just a really good foundation of if i want to study the bible rightly how should i do it so and it was I, convicting very convicting <laughs> you, you abernethy just loves the bible and yeah. it just spills out of mm -hmm. that text yeah yeah and then we hope that you'll buy a study bible of some sort you can go watch our episode on recommendations there but especially hopefully the cultural backgrounds study Bible. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's something a lot of Christians want to know of like, what was the culture of that time? How's, how's it enlighten the text? And it goes verse by verse through the whole Bible, giving, you know, the, the most relevant snippets of information that you need to know. Mm -hmm. It's on my Christmas list, at least you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> he has it online, but not yeah. in book form. Nice. And, oh, one more. Go ahead. Yeah. And the last one we want to recommend it, we're, we will have an interview in the future. Uh, Lord willing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have good good connections connections that <laughs> it should happen. But uh, Peter Gurry and John Mead's book called Scribes in Scripture. It's a new summary overview of how we got the Bible. So who chose which books are in the Bible? Uh, who did all the copying? How is it? Is it reliable? Is it and so on? Like all of those questions are. Uh, in this one book, it, they wrote it for, um, you know, average people, not not for scholars. But it, it's still a it's it's a hard book. Uh, so that's why we hope to do an interview to kind of help uh, give some context before you before you read that book. But that's another one that we would love for you to have on your shelf. Awesome. And we have a couple challenges for you: some New Year's resolutions, two of them. So one is to start using the NET footnotes. If you remember back in our episode with Hampton Keithley, he was gave a very broad um, tutorial on the NET, and it's all online. Just use your Bible app, go to the NET translation, and then there are footnotes after, I mean, almost what, every verse? Pretty much every verse, yeah. Yeah, that just enlighten the text, translations, and textual variants, just all these notes that are helpful to understand what you're reading. So please start using the NET footnotes. I need to do a better job of it myself personally. <laughs> and the second one is to read the Apocrypha. Dr. Seth Ehorn was on our podcast a couple episodes ago, and it's the books between Malachi and Matthew. And I personally as well would recommend that. I read it mm -hmm. a year ago, and it was very enlightening, very um, yeah, exciting, and like what actually happened in between that 400 years of silence like something must have happened so would yeah, definitely recommend and there's that. there's so many just like good stories mm -hmm. in there that that we miss out on if you if you need to start somewhere i always tell people start with the book of susanna it's one chapter and it's <laughs> it's just such a great story it just warms my heart so yeah and that's probably most available online as well yeah those are it adds the nrsv translation has in the the good news translation i think it's called something like that also, it's a easier. It's kind of more like an NIV type mm -hmm. translation of the the NRSV's more formal. The Good News translation is more functional, but they both okay. have the apocrypha on there. Yeah. So if you go to BibleGateway.org and click on the NRSV translation, it's after Malachi, right? Mm -hmm. If after Malachi, it'll start the apocrypha. You can buy a print copy, but it's free online. So yeah. All right. So thanks again for all your support. And we hope you continue enjoying the Bible Toolbox. Yeah, thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Bible Toolbox. Visit our website at thebibletoolbox.com for more information and resources about the content. Be sure to contact us with suggestions of any tools you'd like us to review.
And thank you to those who support us on Patreon and who have reached out with encouraging messages. We couldn't do it without you. 